and welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. I wanted to talk about Wreck-It Ralph, uh, although not the film. I'm going to talk about that another time because for some reason it gets a bit of a bad rap, which I don't really understand. I love this movie. But anyway, uh, what I really wanted to talk about is one of my favorite parts of the movie, the fact that they actually created a video game for it. Uh, and that's sort of what we've got displayed here in the menu, is um, Fix-It Felix, which was uh, created uh, fictionally for the film. And uh, it's actually been created uh, by various fans. Uh, I think you saw when I did the Portland Retro Gaming Expo pickups video last year, there was a Sega Genesis Fix-It Felix game made, and I'm actually going to play that, plus a couple of others. And... Uh, there are some that are really good, and my favorite actually might surprise you. But uh, anyway, let's let's get on with it. Um, so I'll show you from the film what is established to be the rules of Fix It Felix. It's uh, I'm amazed no game was ever actually made like this back in the '80s. It it just it speaks to it's a Donkey Kong kind of an idea, which obviously the filmmakers wanted to do. But it's different enough from Donkey Kong that uh, I think it stands up terrifically as a game. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see how it looks in the film, and then I'll talk about the four different versions that I've got. My name's Ralph. So here we are at the beginning of the film. Now, I'm not going to explain uh, the whole storyline part of it. You can always watch the film uh, anytime you'd like. Uh, obviously, Ralph is uh, moved into the dump of bricks. There's a new uh, building going up, and he's really, really angry. He wants to wreck it. So here's the building going up, and uh, this does appear in a lot of these uh, home versions of this game. But I'm very impressed. So there he goes. He's smashing the windows. The thing is, fixing is the name of the game. Literally, fix it, Felix Jr. So, yeah, so you come along as Fix-It Felix, and you start repairing the windows, avoiding the bricks as uh, Ralph smashes the, 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 the top of the building there. Now what's interesting, not only does he jump around, but if he gets one of these pies, it actually gives him an invincibility in his hat. And you can see the bricks bounce around and he goes super fast. End of the level. So, uh, at the end of uh, whatever stage you're on, you get a medal, the people who live in the building kiss you, and they kick Ralph off the building. Now, a lot of these versions you're about to see actually have that established, so let's have a look at them. years The first version I want to show you is running on my computer, and as you can see here, um, it's actually designed with a widescreen monitor in mind. Uh, it's um, it's not available anymore. I actually saw this posted on the killer list of video games. There was a link. It's not um, active anymore, so I can't really tell you where you can get this. But this is as close to the film version as I have encountered. I mean, you've got you've got Ralph in his stack of bricks. You've got the building going up. I mean, it's a really close rendition, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. This version. So what I'll do. Um, it's actually hard-coded. Uh, you have to hit the letter C to play it, uh, but let's do so. Let's throw in a quarter. So, and that's it, player one. So I'm using the shift button down on this side to do my repairs, and I'm moving with the arrow keys over on this side. I'll do a zoom in in a second to show you the game up close. So basically, yeah, I just jump around and I repair the windows and I try to avoid uh, Ralph's bricks. Didn't do a very good job there. It moves really smoothly. It's um, it's a good challenge. I imagine this is what a real Fix-It Felix cabinet would have played like. Let's see if we can get a pie here. There's a pie. I'll go up and grab it. Now I'm invincible, and not only am I invincible, but Ralph is just wailing on those bricks. End of the level.
And just like in the movie, the people come out, they give Felix his gold medallion, and a pie, and a kiss, and they kick Ralph off the building. This one's really good. Um, there's only minor complaints that I have for it. Uh, the In the movie, and I mean, all, my only complaints are the fact that they are actually not movie accurate. Uh, uh, Fix-It Felix moves a lot faster when he's got the hat on. Maybe the designers of this game code, though, decided that that would make it too easy or something. Um, outside of that, though, it's got a great deal of depth. It's really, really fun to play, especially on my main cab. And, um, yeah, it, it has everything that Wreck-It Ralph should have. Eventually, we've got birds start flying in the scene. Uh, there are platforms that are in our way, like, uh, like somebody's opened shutters so that you can't just jump from side to side. You have to actually... There's that wind... There's that hat. The um, the other problems, if you will, for this are the fact that it's um, it's not readily available, and also if you don't play this in widescreen, you see how I've got my score up at the top here. That's not actually visible. Uh, if you run this on a, a like on my main cab, for example, where it's a, a standard landscape shape screen, um, it'll fit, but the top of the uh, screen where the score is disappears. So that's a bit of a problem. Also, there's no way there's no way to remap the the keys. If you've got a main cabinet like I do, um, you better be able to map one of your buttons to the letter C to put a coin in, because there is no way to get into the code of this thing and change it to be whatever way your particular buttons are configured. Anyway, outside of that, though, this is a great, great version of Fix-It Felix, and I play this regularly. Okay, so let's go down one generation and try out the Fix-It Felix game that came out for iOS. This one's pretty good. Um, it says here to buy the exclusive version to hit that, but when I do so, it says it's not available on the store. I don't know if this was just a limited time release or something, but uh, let's play this one anyway. It's pretty fun. There you go. You recognize this? There's Ralph doing his thing. Here comes Felix. So I move with this little d paddy thing here, and I repair with that. You'll notice right away, this one's a slower version. Uh, it, like, the bricks come down slower, I'm moving slower. Um, it's it's a different kind of a vibe, and you're going to find that with the other couple versions I'm going to be playing here in a second. But it's still pretty good. Pretty good fun. Also, what's different with this one is, some windows have only got one pane is broken, and others, like this, there are two. So I have to actually hit it twice in order to repair that. That's um, that's a little bit of a different design idea. The other thing with this version is you'll notice there's a timer ticking away in the corner. Um, I'm, again, I'm not sure if that's because this was like a limited non-exclusive version or not. Um, as long as I finish these levels in a timely fashion, the timer resets and I can continue to play, but I'm often getting a little message that uh, I've run out of time. So again, not sure if that's a limitation of this particular demo light version of this game. Maybe the exclusive version would have had the full, uh, that wouldn't have been on a timer. Unfortunately, I can't tell because I can't buy the uh, exclusive version anymore. Much as I like this one, it's very slow and, and kind of pedantic. I, I, I kind of preferred the, the one that we just saw, as far as the speed and the pace goes.
You'll notice the uh, ones that have flowers on them, I can't jump. And there's actually some here now that are blocked by shutters. I mentioned that was also in the, um, the version on my computer there. I didn't get that far in the game. A complaint I have about this version, though, is it seems like it's all randomly uh, generated as to which windows you can get to and which ones you can't. And I'm finding, like, right now, I don't see... Oh, wait, there is a way to get down to them. I hope it's intelligent enough not to block your way. I haven't played it enough to be able to make that determination. There we go, game over, because I ran out of time. I've loaded up another game here, because I just wanted to see what the pie does. However, um, my conclusion on this, it's not a great version of the game. I mean, certainly compared to that last one. It looks nice, the, um, oh, there's the pie. There, now I'm invincible. But you see, Ralph isn't really, like, going crazy or anything. Sure, the bricks don't affect me, but they just sort of pass through. Uh, not, not too much of a fan of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to finish this level. I just want to give my review, if you will. It's, it's okay. It's very slow. And when you're used to playing that, um, that other version that I just showed you on the computer, uh, this is very, um, kind of a disappointment in comparison. Anyway, so that's the iOS version. Okay, we're going to go down one more generation now and try out Fix It Felix for the Sega Genesis. This is a homebrew title, and uh, let's check it out. Okay, let's give this homebrew a try here. So we start off as we have before. There's Ralph trying to get some sleep out in the forest. The bulldozer comes along and pushes him into the bricks and the building goes up, uh, much like we've seen before. It's uh, really, really good looking. I, I love what they've done here, especially when you consider this is running on a Sega Genesis. Um, my one complaint though already is there's no way to bypass this. You're stuck watching this animation every single time you start the game. I, I would have liked them to have built, like, if I hit the start button, or the mode button, or any button, I'd like to be able to get past that, because the first few times you see it, it's, it's delightful. After about the hundredth time, you really wish you could skip it. At least they have some of the voices, though. Not all of them, but it's, it's pretty well done. And the, the detail on the characters is really, really excellent. So here comes Felix to do his thing. He does this weird trip and death animation, though, every time. I'm not sure what that's about. Right, so just like the iOS version, I'm going through and I have to repair both of the windows. If, uh, if there are two broken windows on the panes, I have to go up and on each one fix them. Uh, whereas if there's only a single like that, we're good to go. Avoid the bricks. It's a little bit faster, so the challenge is a little bit better. And you can see they put the flower pot so I can't jump up. Unfortunately, there's no animation that instructs that for you. Like, you don't know that you can't jump up. At least the um, the iOS one and that computer one, there was a little bit of a blocking animation to sort of show, yes, there's something in your way, Felix. You can't get there. Oh, I missed that pie. Oh, well. And uh, later on, let's see if we can get the pie this time. There we go. Now I'm invincible. Yay! No, no, this can hurt me. Unfortunately, I really like the way Ralph, like, uh, starts banging really, really fast in that uh, computer version. I, I kind of wish they had included that with this. Let's grab that pie again. There we go. As you can see, there's a shutter to the right, or sorry, to my left. I can't jump that direction. But it would have been nice if there was, like, a little um, blocking animation to indicate that's why you can't go there, Felix. There isn't, so unless you've played the other versions... Ooh, that was close. Unless you played the other versions, you wouldn't know that that's a, a shutter in your way, or that there's like a, uh, a flower pot that's blocking you either. This one's not bad, and it actually feels pretty good. I, I don't like the iOS version because I'm, I'm certainly not against virtual d-pads and touchscreen controls. I've, I've had a lot of games like that that I really enjoy. I just find that um, it's not, it doesn't feel right whenever I'm playing it. And, and this one, at least you're using a D-pad controller for the Genesis. This is the right way to go.
Almost finished this level. You'll see there's some ducks have arrived on the screen. That's important for what's coming up next. There we go, I have finished the building. And just like we've seen before, there's your gold medal, Felix. And goodbye to you, Ralph. Yeah, this Genesis one is really good. I mean, it feels right. It's uh, definitely better to play it with the controller as opposed to those uh, touch screens, uh, or the touch screen of the iOS version, sorry. Um, but, it's It's got a little bit of a problem. I don't like the fact that you can't skip that intro. I have occasionally had the um, the pie give me the invincibility, but then my my death animation would appear, and I'm not sure if I actually lost a life or not because I was so surprised to see that i uh, I didn't notice if I lost a life. So I think there's there's a little bit of uncertainty with this code. it's It's good. Don't get me wrong. I really like this version. But um, I'm going to come now to the final version of Fix-It Felix, and you'll be surprised what it's running on. Especially when you consider it's my favorite. Now this is my favorite home version of Fix-It Felix. You're probably looking at this going, what on earth is this? What is this abomination? Uh, this is Fix-It Felix running... On the Atari 2600. Yeah, somebody at Atari Age actually made a home version of Fix-It Felix that runs on the 2600, and it's great. Um, I'll get a, a game started here in a second, but I just want to kind of explain the screen, because it's not intuitive, but once you get it, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So, the little white character in those bottom boxes there, those are the windows again, and that is Felix. He's got a little arrow above his head to explain where he is down at the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to have to reach in and explain all of this. But uh, these are the windows, and you will see Ralph in a second climb up to the top and start throwing stuff down, just like usual. The difference is, how do you know which windows are fixed and which ones aren't? Because uh, unlike the previous uh, consoles and uh, the computer and the iOS, uh, you aren't able to easily tell that the windows are fixed or not. What the designer did is he actually made it so that there's these little indicators along the screen. Here's your score. These little boxes here are indicating these three windows and these three windows, depending on where you're standing. Like if I jump Felix up to this row, it'll show different windows. I'll get to that in a second. This is your number of lives left. So, if a window is red like that, it means it's not repaired. If a window is green, it means it is repaired. So what you want to do is you want to jump Felix to each of these boxes and hit the button to uh, repair. But you also want to see, are you looking at a red row or is it green? And if it's green, you want to have it so that this is a long dash and a long dash. In other words, there should be a long dash and a long dash to indicate all the windows are fixed. Let me show you the gameplay because it's harder, it's easier to explain it by actually playing. Okay, so here comes Ralph, and I'm Fix-It Felix. All I have to do is jump from window to window and repair them. There are pies in this game, but they don't actually give you invincibility. They actually just give you a life back. So if you get hit, you can actually use the pie to, to keep alive. But it's, it's not quite the same as uh, in the other game. Now, I've been hit. Let's see if I can get to that pie. Hey, did you see my life went back up? So it's not quite the same as the um, it's not quite the same as the arcade game, but uh, for a 2600 version, I think it's pretty good. Now I've just about fixed every window on this screen. In fact, I happen to know this one is the only one left to repair. But I wanted to show you how that's how you know that because if you haven't played this game before, it could be very confusing. Each of these windows, these rows of windows, is represented by these two uh, bars down here. And when they're full, like these two are, that means they're good and you don't need to repair these windows anymore. How do you get to the, uh, how do you know the last window is need in need of repair? If I jump up to that row, you see how that one's missing a little bit of its health bar? I've got to avoid these birds. The way to do that is essentially I jump up here to the bar that's got the missing gap. 
And then when it turns red, that indicates you're standing on the square that needs to be fixed, like this. So again, it's not really intuitive at first, but after a while you get used to it. And I tell you, this is a really, really great version of uh, Fix It Felix. I love what the designer has done for this. I'll put a link down below as to where you can download this from. Let's get that pie. Ooh, that was risky. It's also got a great challenge level to it. Like, uh, it's, it's very hard to keep ahead of the birds and also Ralph himself. So this is, this is my favorite version of Fix It Felix. I think this is, they've done an amazing job here. Ooh, that one's already fixed. They've done an amazing job here of actually keeping the, the tone of the original games and yet it's running on a 2600. Now again, you see how these bars are all fixed except for this. Ooh. If I jump up here, that's empty. That means all three of these windows need to be repaired. So let me just go across when Ralph gets out of my way. And we will finish this level. Here he comes. So I'll fix. Fix. Get out of the way of the bird because it's... Oh, uh, whew. I also like the fact that the building changes each time. I mean, there's no animation of the, the villagers inside kissing uh, Felix or anything like that. You don't get the metal. So yeah, it's kind of ironic. This is my favorite version of Fix-It Felix, and this is on the Atari 2600. I mean, not that the others are bad, but what an amazing achievement that you've got a game that is uh, very compelling... Oh no, and also very challenging, and yet is running on the oldest gaming hardware that there is. I mean, that that's just an incredible achievement, if you ask me. Anyway, I'm going to cut the video here. So yeah, if you um, if you want to try out your own fix at Felix on the Atari 2600, I highly recommend it. Links in the description below, as mentioned. And um, until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.